Welcome to the One Year Bible, October 16, the Old Testament reading, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 1, through chapter 29, verse 32. One day in late summer of that same year, the fourth year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, Hananiah son of Azur, a prophet from Gibeon, addressed me publicly in the temple while all the priests and people listened. He said, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. I will remove the yoke of the king of Babylon from your necks. Within two years I will bring back all the temple treasures that King Nebuchadnezzar carried off to Babylon, and I will bring back Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the other captives that were taken to Babylon. I will surely break the yoke that the king of Babylon has put on your necks, I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremiah responded to Hananiah as they stood in front of all the priests and people at the temple. He said, Amen. May your prophecies come true. I hope the Lord does everything you say. I hope he does bring back from Babylon the treasures of this temple and all the captives. But listen now to the solemn words I speak to you in the presence of all these people. The ancient prophets who preceded you and me spoke against many nations, always warning of war, disaster, and disease. So a prophet who predicts peace must show he is right. Only when his predictions come true can we know that he is really from the Lord. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off Jeremiah's neck and broke it in pieces. And Hananiah said again to the crowd that had gathered, This is what the Lord says. Just as this yoke has been broken, within two years I will break the yoke of oppression from all the nations now subject to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. With that, Jeremiah left the temple area. Soon after this confrontation with Hananiah, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says, You have broken a wooden yoke, but you have replaced it with a yoke of iron. The Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, I have put a yoke of iron on the necks of all these nations, forcing them into slavery under King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. I have put everything, even the wild animals, under his control. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but the people believe your lies. Therefore this is what the Lord says, You must die. Your life will end this very year because you have rebelled against the Lord. Two months later, the prophet Hananiah died. Jeremiah wrote a letter from Jerusalem to the elders, priests, prophets, and all the people who had been exiled to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. This was after King Jehoiachin, the queen mother, the court officials, the other officials of Judah, and all the craftsmen and artisans had been deported from Jerusalem. He sent the letter with Elisa, son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, when they went to Babylon as King Zedekiah's ambassadors to Nebuchadnezzar. This is what Jeremiah's letter said. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them, so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply, do not dwindle away, and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets and fortune-tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. 
Do not listen to their dreams, because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for seventy years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. You claim that the Lord has raised up prophets for you in Babylon. But this is what the Lord says about the king who sits on David's throne and all those still living here in Jerusalem, your relatives who are not exiled to Babylon. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, I will send war, famine, and disease upon them and make them like bad figs, too rotten to eat. Yes, I will pursue them with war, famine, and disease, and I will scatter them around the world. In every nation where I send them, I will make them an object of damnation, horror, contempt, and mockery. For they refuse to listen to me, though I have spoken to them repeatedly through the prophets I sent. And you who are in exile have not listened either, says the Lord. Therefore listen to this message from the Lord, all you captives there in Babylon. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says about your prophets, Ahab son of Koliah and Zedekiah son of Mahasaiah, who are telling you lies in my name. I will turn them over to Nebuchadnezzar for execution before your eyes. Their terrible fate will become proverbial, so that the Judean exiles will curse someone by saying, May the Lord make you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon burned alive. For these men have done terrible things among my people. They have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives and have lied in my name, saying things I did not command. I am a witness to this. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord sent this message to Shemaiah, the Nehelamite in Babylon. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. You wrote a letter on your own authority to Zephaniah, son of Mahasiah, the priest, and you sent copies to the other priests and people in Jerusalem. You wrote to Zephaniah, The Lord has appointed you to replace Jehoiada as the priest in charge of the house of the Lord. You are responsible to put into stocks and neck irons any crazy man who claims to be a prophet. So why have you done nothing to stop Jeremiah from Anathoth, who pretends to be a prophet among you? Jeremiah sent a letter here to Babylon, predicting that our captivity will be a long one. He said, Build homes and plan to stay, plant gardens and eat the food they produce. But when Zephaniah the priest received Shemaiah's letter, he took it to Jeremiah and read it to him. Then the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah, Send an open letter to all the exiles in Babylon. Tell them, This is what the Lord says concerning Shemaiah the Nehelamite. Since he has prophesied to you when I did not send him, and has tricked you into believing his lies, I will punish him and his family. None of his descendants will see the good things I will do for my people, for he has incited you to rebel against me. I, the Lord, have spoken. The New Testament reading, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1-20 through 20. This letter is from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, appointed by the command of God our Savior and Christ Jesus, 
who gives us hope. I am writing to Timothy, my true son in the faith. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. When I left for Macedonia, I urged you to stay there in Ephesus and stop those whose teaching is contrary to the truth. Don't let them waste their time in endless discussion of myths and spiritual pedigrees. These things only lead to meaningless speculations which don't help people live a life of faith in God. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. But some people have missed this whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about, even though they speak so confidently. We know that the law is good when used correctly, for the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders. The law is for people who are sexually immoral or who practice homosexuality or are slave traders, liars, promise breakers, or who do anything else that contradicts the wholesome teaching that comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength to do His work. He considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve Him, even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ. In my insolence, I persecuted His people. But God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was! He filled me with the faith and love that come from Christ Jesus. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of His great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in Him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal King, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you, based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battles, cling to your faith in Christ, and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hymenaeus and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might learn not to blaspheme God. Psalm 86, verses 1-17 through 17. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. 
No pagan god is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. All the nations you made will come and bow before you, Lord. They will praise your holy name. For you are great and perform wonderful deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. With all my heart I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will give glory to your name forever, for your love for me is very great. You have rescued me from the depths of death. O God, insolent people rise up against me. A violent gang is trying to kill me. You mean nothing to them. But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Look down and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Save me, the son of your servant. Send me a sign of your favor. Then those who hate me will be put to shame. For you, O Lord, help and comfort me. Proverbs 25, verse 17. Don't visit your neighbors too often, or you will wear out your welcome. Welcome.